Hello, Facebook family, Resurrection family. I am on a little late tonight, but I'm not going to stop uh, our Bible study at 7 o'clock if we're, if we're learning stuff and we're involved. I'm not going to do that. So I might get a little later than not exactly at 7 o'clock. Just bear with me, uh, but I will be here. Uh, uh, I'm going to give a few more minutes. I see people are coming on. Hello, Jody. How are you? Good to see you. It is good to be back. I'm thankful to the ministers and the deacons and the members for taking care of things while Juan and I were out of town. Uh, it's great to know you can leave town and know everything's going to be running smoothly and, and be the same. I watched, and uh, Reverend Walt did a fantastic job last week, and uh, I'm thankful that God keeps blessing him and, and encouraging him to do great things. Hello, Brother right. Brooks. Hello, right. Denise. God bless you. Jennifer, God bless you. Uh, I know y'all been watching the news, and uh, we talked about it a little bit, a Bible study about what's going on in Ukraine. We cannot look past what's happening there because whatever goes on there affects the world. And if we don't try to help uh, them, sooner or later it's going to cross into our borders and we're going to be in the same situation. I, all I think about is the way Hitler did it. Hitler attacked one country and everybody turned it back and didn't pay attention, say it's going to be okay. He's going to stop. And then he goes to another country, did the same thing. As a matter of fact, they try to buy him off. They try to give him stuff to say, okay, are you happy now? Putin is the same way. He will not be happy until he owns all of Russia the way it used to be. And he's going to do whatever he needs to do to get that done. So we have to be conscious and be watchful of what we see is going on. And then also show compassion to what the people are going through in Ukraine. Amen. A lot of Christians over there, a lot of believers over there, a lot of people over there uh, that love God. doesn't matter whether they are believers or not. People are people. And we should show compassion to people that are going through something that they didn't cause. Nobody provoked Russia to do what they're doing. Nobody uh, caused them to want to do that. They did that because they wanted to. We have to show compassion. That's what I'm going to talk about tonight is compassion. One of the problems that I have, uh, because it's my personality, I'm very compassionate and empathetic to people when they're going through. And I say it all the time, when you hurt, I hurt. I hate doing funerals. Not because I don't like preaching, but I hate doing funerals because I see how it affects the family so much. And when they're grieving and they're crying, I do the same thing. And I feel it what they feel. I know they need consolation, they need comfort. Uh, and I know I can't fall apart when they need me to do what I need to do, but I feel compassion for people when they're going through. Let's talk about compassion. The Bible says the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He is, has compassion on all he has made. To have compassion means to empathize with someone who is suffering and to feel compelled to reduce the suffering. So compassion, not just witnessing somebody's suffering, is feeling the compulsion, the compulsion to do something to alleviate the discomfort. That means you do something and you take action to help somebody when you see that they're going through. Not always easy, but something that we all should be compelled to do if you see somebody is in need or somebody is hurting. That's what good Christians should do. It's a fuller, truer definition than feelings alone, and it's a very biblical understanding. The definition of compassion is a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is hurting, in pain, or has misfortune and is accompanied by a strong desire to help the suffering. Jesus Christ is the greatest example of someone with true compassion. Not only did Jesus have compassion to heal people from physical suffering, he also showed the greatest compassion for mankind when he died on the cross for our sins. 
Jesus did that because he had compassion for us. And he wanted us to be able to live again. Amen. So his compassion, that's why they call the passion of the Christ. His compassion, his passion was that we might have another chance at life. And so he gave his life through his compassion for us that we have another chance. It's not always easy, watch this, to show compassion, especially when we feel like the person deserves their misfortune. Mm. It's not easy to show compassion to somebody that you might feel they got what they deserve. Mm. They strung out, so they got all these problems because they they're addicted. So they deserve what they get. No, we got to show their compassion too. They can't put the bottle down. We got to show compassion to them. That don't mean you got to give them money or get them drunk, but you got to show compassion to try to help them get, this, get the help that they need. Amen? Sometimes it's hard to show compassion to people that we think don't deserve our compassion or our empathy. But that's when it's hard. That's when we got to step up. That's when we got to trust God. That's when we got to believe in what God has already taught us. To love our neighbor as ourselves. To love those that despitefully use us. Hallelujah. Hard sometimes. But God is calling on us as believers to do that. Amen. Isaiah 4, 9, 13 says, Sing for joy, O heavens. Rejoice, O earth. Burst in the song, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on them in their suffering. Do you understand that God has already shown compassion to you? If you look back over your life, and I ain't the only one, you can know a time in your life that God showed compassion over what you were going through or showed compassion over you when you weren't doing the right thing, showed compassion over you when you were out in the street, showed compassion over you when you were drunk and derelict, when you weren't serving God, he still loved you anyhow. Amen. He loved me anyhow. He showed me compassion when I didn't love him the way he loved me. Hmm. Seniors say he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs, even when I wasn't a true believer and didn't serve him the way I should. Amen. God shows us love. Watch this. Colossians 3 and 12 says, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself, watch this, with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. He's calling on us to do that. Tender heart of mercy. Kindness. Humility. We talked tonight about Saul and, 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 and Samuel and, and David. And Saul's downfall was that he lost his humility. And Saul's blessing and David's blessing was he was humble. God took his favor off of Saul because Saul got the big head. And forgot who he was and forgot how he got to where he was. Because God is the one that elevated Saul. It wasn't Saul himself. God is the one that watches over you. He's the one that blesses you. He's the one that elevates you. We cannot lose our humility and forget how we got to where we are. If you got a new house, it wasn't you that got the house. It was God. You got that new car. You got that beautiful wife and that lovely husband. It wasn't you that got it. It was God. We cannot forget that it's God that give us our blessings. I think I ain't got one more. Uh, Isaiah 30 and 18 says, So the Lord must wait for you to come to him so he can show you his love and compassion. For the Lord is a faithful God. Blessed are those who wait for his help. And I like the first part. The Lord must wait for you to come to him. Sometimes we got to step down off our high horse and go to God. We got to step down for who we think we are and go to God. And he said if we go to him, no matter what your background, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, he will show compassion and love for you. All right, I'm going to get to my prayer list. That's all the scriptures I'm going to share. I got a few more. 
but I think you get what I'm talking about. Compassion, people think it might be easy, but it ain't so easy sometimes. People do you wrong. People mess over you. People scandalize your name. People stab you in the back. People say all mad or evil against you. And God says you got to love them and show compassion anyhow. That don't mean you got to go to dinner with them every week. <laughs> or invite them over to your house. But you still got to show love and compassion and not harden your heart. Because that's how you get your blessing. All right. Prayer list. Uh, Cassandra Porter, Willie Burton and family, Nola Hunt, Barbara Nix, Elaine McKinney, Mother Glover's sister, Nola, Marsha Madison, Lee Madison, my wife Wanda, Barry Brown, praying for you, Brother Barry, First Lady Deborah Booz, we're glad that you're feeling better, Deacon Cardell Mallett, Charles and LaVon Williams, Rena in Chicago, Juanita Madison, Rosemond Lee, Gwen Jones, Teresa Brown, Sharon Lee, Pastor Shanks, uh, Felix Campbell, Rick Zikafus, Cousin Kevin and Flint, Shirley Thompson's daughter, Renita Taylor, Mother Aileen Bird, Helen Bird, J Jimmy Williams, Kathy Cornette, Deacon Herb Flowers, Elaine, Branda, Diane Hunter, Eddie Rubin Burks, Tyrone Patrick, Corliss Crowder, uh, Vonda Hodges, happy birthday, Vonda. Cheryl Wilson, Deacon Eddie Nash, <coughs> Pastor Strong, and his brother, Natasha Kelly, uh, Deacon James Buckingham, his wife, Isla Jean, happy birthday, Sister Isla, Janita Smith, uh, Sister Shirley McCaster, my mom, Marilyn Loma, Sharon Hall, Alicia Davis, Darnell Moody, Charlotte Robinson, and our lovely Mother Mays, Mother Ingram, um, uh, Mother Glover, Mother Thompson, O.C. Ballard, Sonny Edwards, Gilbert Young, Joe Simmons, Paula Hicks Hudson, Tamika Buckingham, Cheryl Perry, Terry Perry, Tariva Taylor, Dashi, Jaden, Kimberly Rochelle, Brenda McFall, Jennifer Close, Debbie Ramsey, Reverend Earl and Wanda Buckingham. God bless you for being here tonight. Lorenzo Buckingham, Cousin Diane, Susie Wycliffe, Deacon Archie Lewis and family, Deacon Charles and Deborah Gibbon, Reverend Leo Walton, Corrine Wheeler, Henrietta Taylor, Aunt Molly, Raymond Corrigans, Nate and Martha Willis, Hazel Bester, Dwayne Hammond, Denisa Boyd, Sister Lucinda Sharp, Carmen Morgan, Bruce Watson, Violet Terry, the Thompson family, Dana and Marcus Pickett, Denise Perky, Jody Lambert Solis, Pastor Bill Russell and family, James Dickerson, Keisha Bowen, uh, Cousin Dorothy Brewer, my children and grandchildren, Tisha, Tish, TJ, Tish, and Marvin, Faith and Armani, Doris and Terry Neal, Robert and Heidi Marshall, Tanya Smith, Tequila Church, Patricia Garrett. Someone I missed, send me your names, text me your names, and I will add you to the list. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We first pray for those that are going in war, that are battling war. War is not something that's fancy, Lord, and, and we know that war is not something that we need to see. We ask that you send your spirit there right now, God cover the people in Ukraine and touch the leaders in Russia that they may see the error of their ways and give them compassion over the people that they are tormenting. We ask, O oh God, that you bless our church family, all the names that I call, that you bless the ones that are here tonight, that your spirit realm reign over all of us, O oh God. Thank you for Resurrection Baptist Church. Thank you for lifting us up. Thank you for providing for us, God. Thank you for your many blessings over this church and this congregation. We all understand that we're not here by ourselves. We all understand that we're here only because of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We all understand, God, we can do nothing and we are nothing without you as a part of our life and a part of this ministry. We ask that your veil keep covered over us, oh God, that your arms keep surrounding us, that your angels preside in this building, that you continue to lift us up when we get worried, lift us up when we're concerned, lift us up when we struggle, lift us up when we disagree, lift us up, oh God, and provide us your power that we can overcome, that we can provide for the people in this community, that we can provide for the people that worship here, that we can provide for the people that you send this way. 
that you have something here that can feed their hungry soul, that you have something here that can lift them up in their troubled times, that you can give them peace of mind in their homes, on their jobs, and with their families. We know that it's not because of us, God. We know that we are only vessels to be used by you. We know that it's not because of us, God. It's because of your Holy Spirit and your anointing that reigns. We ask, God, that you touch the names that I call tonight. Go to wherever they are. Supply their need tonight, God. Fill the voids in their life. Give them comfort if they need comfort. Give them finances if they need finances. And I ask, God, that you heal their bodies if they're sick. One thing that I realized in my short time in ministry and as pastor, that you are a healing God. That if someone calls on you, God, and they need your touch, that you will touch their bodies. If someone calls on you, God, and they need your power, you'll send them your power and get them up out of this sick bed. If someone calls on you, God, you will hear their voice and you will answer from heaven and send down your angels to surround their bedside. I know, God, tonight, if somebody calls your name, you will hear their voice. And you will send down your power from heaven and supply every need. Yes. Hallelujah. Get them out of their sick beds. Yes. And allow them to serve you when they're healed. Yes. I ask that you heal tonight. I know you got angels at your beck and call. Send your angels to everyone that needs you right now. Speak into the spirit right now. Right now Lord. Let them hear your voice, God, and let them know that you're already there. Yes. You're already working on their behalf. Yes. You're already working on the inside of their body yes. to take care of whatever the enemy tries to put in. Yes. I know that you're able, and I believe that you can, and I know that you will. Yes. Do it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, I know that not only us, but those that watch and those that hear and those that know you for themselves will continue to give you the glory and give you the praise. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. And we give Jesus glory tonight because we are nothing and can do nothing without him. We give Jesus glory tonight because of his dying. We now can yet live. We give Jesus glory tonight. Because it was him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. It was him that changed our lives. Have you been changed by God? Has God changed your life? Then give him glory right now. Give him praise right now. Say hallelujah. To the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give him glory. Because without him, we are nothing. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. amen. And thank God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. We give God glory tonight. We thank you for your prayers with us and your tuning in. If you know someone that needs to hear this prayer, or needs to feel better and they're going through something in their life, then share this video. Be a witness to somebody else by blessing them with the word of God yes. and with the Holy Spirit. I know you can, and I know you will. Right. God bless you. God keep you. Tune in Sunday or tune in tomorrow. We'll be preaching at Greater St. Mary tonight, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. I will probably use this medium and, and go live even on our church broadcast page. If not, you can go to Greater St. Mary's. I know they, they do they go live whenever they have service. But I'll try to set up our camera and we can maybe go live as well. So you can tune in. We're preaching for Pastor Robert Lyons uh, pastoral anniversary and also his birthday. They combine the celebration together. And we'll certainly have a word for the Lord. God bless you and God keep you. Have a wonderful night. Then tune in Sunday as well. God bless you. Amen.